Hi, I'm Keith Budden, uh, here with the latest of our daily talks about GDPR. And uh, as you probably know by now, I'm doing one of these talks every day between now and May the 25th. So we've still got quite a few days. So hopefully we can cover a wide range of information in that time, which hopefully you'll find useful. Um, for today, I've chosen the subject of CCTV and within that really the subject of facial photographs um, and just where gdpr might have an impact onto that well firstly of course is that you can have a cctv within your factory or your shop or your office and that's fine you just need to make sure that it's clearly signed that those cameras are there and I would suggest that somewhere within easy reach that if a member of the public comes in and asks for it, you can also have a policy about how long you keep those CCTV images and uh, who you would be prepared to release them to and why. And crucially as well, what you do with them, how you store them, how you keep them secure, how you destroy them. How how can someone be confident that that G, that CCTV from three or four days ago has been destroyed, or seven days ago, ten days ago, thirty days ago, however long you decide to keep the CCTV? So that by itself is not too much of a issue. Um, not a lot changes from where we are now, really. Uh, I would hope that you have a limited number of staff within your company who can view the CCTV images and presumably you would only release them to the police or someone else who could justify a legal reason for wanting to see them. So a lot of that, as I say, is probably there already, although I do notice a few shops certainly which don't really clearly indicate that CCTV is in operation, and they should do. And I'd be fairly confident of having a bet that if I went up to the counter and asked the lady or the man working behind the counter for a copy of their policy of how they handled CCTV, they wouldn't immediately be able to produce one. So that needs to change. You need to make sure that you do have a policy and that it is readily accessible and that people can read it. And also have a sign in the window that you use CCTV so that you can argue that someone knowingly consented to being on your CCTV when they walked into the premises. So that's one side of CCTV. The other side of CCTV, which potentially could cause businesses hours and hours and hours of work, is if one, someone comes into your shop or into your office or into your garage and chooses to exercise their right to be forgotten. And so they say, I want to be forgotten from all your records. I know I'm entitled to under GDPR legislation. Da, ba, da, ba, da. How are you going to do that? How are you actually going to look back through all your CCTV to see if that person appears in them? And then if they do, how do you delete those images? Can you delete those images? Can your system allow you to delete those images? What do you do if there's other people in the same image as the person in that image? How do you have it so that you can fuzz out the faces of those other people so that you can show to the person who's made the request only those images of their own face because that's all they're entitled to see. They're not entitled to see who else was in the shop at the time, but they are entitled to know that you've deleted those frames on CCTV that have them in. Now, hopefully you'd think that the person coming in would be compliant and would give you an indication of when they came into your store or your office or your garage but they don't have to they don't have to give you that information at all they can just say i believe that i'm on your cctv and i don't believe you have a legitimate reason for holding it because i didn't commit any offense whilst i was on your premises and i don't think you can have any reasonable suspicion that i committed an offense and therefore i want to be forgotten now the danger is that they know exactly when they came into your store. They may even know exactly which CCTV camera they looked at. Now, if you don't delete those images, 
those people subsequently go through court process and serve a notice on you to produce your CCTV from last Tuesday at 2.53 p.m. from the room in the size of the shop, and you do that, and their image is still there, you've committed an offence under GDPR. And that person can A, report you to the ICO, but B, can sue you for material or non-material damages. Now, all this might sound a bit hairy-fairy, is it ever going to happen? All I would say to that is that um, people within the data security community and the ICO are becoming aware of firms of solicitors and firms of legally trained people who, a bit like PPI, a bit like accident claims a few years ago, at child accident injury claims, and now getting ready to prepare people for this. That, you know, hey, go into a shop, you can join there a week later, make sure they keep their CCTV for a week first, of course, go in there a week later, say you want to be forgotten, you you pour some hours of work looking through all that CCTV to try and find you, and if they say you've, they've deleted you, then the legal firm goes to the court, gets an order, comes after you, asks to see those frames from that period of time. If that person's still there, you've got a problem. So just be aware, just think ahead how you're gonna handle that kind of situation. And finally then, the other bit I wanted to cover today was about still photography, and particularly where you have professional photographs, and this came up as an issue, particularly at a trade show. If you have people come onto your stand and you have a photographer there taking photos that you intend to use for marketing, then that's fine really, because you can ask those people whether they mind being in your marketing material, and assuming they say they're fine with it, then you don't have an issue. Personally, I'd get them to sign the document to say they're fine with it, but even verbally, they say they're fine with it, you don't have an issue. Where you do have an issue is if that photographer stands on your stand and photographs out into the gangway, out into the area where people are just walking along. Because what if you take that photograph, you decide that's a really good news story or your PR department does, you put it in a press release, you send it to the national press, that person's face suddenly appears in all the newspapers across the, across the country or all the, all the industry websites across the country. That person then goes to the ICO and says, I never gave them permission to use my image. My image is personally identifiable information. It belongs to me. I didn't say they should use it. I want you to A, punish them, and B, I'm going to take them to court for damages. So both of these areas hopefully show you where CCTV and photographs are a problem. The other example I would give very quickly is to say if you have photographs of a car that perhaps is outside your office or outside your shop or has is uh, involved in an accident or whatever, that before you put it especially onto social media, that you blank out the registration number because the registration number is personally identifiable information. Whether it's a personalized plate or a bog standard plate, doesn't matter, it's personally identifiable information. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that the police are already wise to this because whenever they put up a picture on Twitter or Facebook about a vehicle which they've caught with no insurance or that has been involved in an accident or whatever, they will always now blank out the registration number on that vehicle so that you can't read it when you when you look at the photograph. So hopefully that's given you plenty to think about, about CCTV and uh, photographs. If you've got any comments, any queries, any questions, anything you want to challenge me on, then please feel free to do so. Please either leave the questions down below or over to the right if you're on Facebook, or just simply down below, if you're viewing this on LinkedIn, or indeed, if you're viewing it on YouTube, because we now have a YouTube channel where you can go and find all these videos. And I hope you're having a great Easter weekend, and I'll speak to you again tomorrow.